Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to give you a couple little updates on the trailer build. This is the Atlantic Marine Trailers boat trailer being custom built, upgraded to our specs. And I just wanted to go over with you why I, I expect these trailers out the way I do, the parts that I use and why, so that everybody has a little bit of understanding of what it takes to build a trailer to have continuous duty or to last a lifetime, um, at least, you know, as I see it, should last a lifetime of your boat or as long as you own your boat if you maintain your trailer. So we'll start with the bolts. I mean, it goes down to the fasteners. Um, Atlantic Marine Trailer puts stainless washers underneath all their bolt heads. If you look at a lot of trailers, take a look at the quality workmanship. See if they've got washers. I mean, even in a stainless package trailer, most of them don't come with washers underneath all of the bolt heads. And you, you think that that's, that's, you know, something really small, but it makes a big difference when you're resisting the corrosion and need to get those bolts changed. Um, if you've got to retorque stuff, makes a humongous difference now here's where i'm not using stainless on the braking i use grade eight fine thread with stainless washers with a non nylock all steel lock nut and my guys at bolt, bolt max always knock it out of the park the reason for that is is i use these caliper brackets that have the cutout right here so if ever you had to replace a caliper bracket or a brake bracket um, due to any issues whatsoever let's say this pin seizes up um, then you got to cut this off and replace the brake bracket well <clears throat> if you had the full wraparound model and it's only like two dollars more expensive they'll have the full wraparound model but that means you have to take the time to remove the hub. Take all the braking apart, you have to remove the hub. So, I go with a grade 8 bolt, stainless washer, and these will be painted up um, so that you try to resist corrosion. In a salt environment, you're going to have it, but the added strength of the grade 8 bolt versus the stainless bolt, um, I've literally had enough brake torque in a panic situation, having to stop a boat trailer, um, that it's sheared these bolts right off. So, um, and that's because of the torque of the wheel and the weight on the wheel and tire, um, it will actually snap these bolts. So I step it up, I go to a grade eight, no worries, no thinking about it after that. But Bolt Max knocks it out of the park. They supply me with all the fasteners. Here's why I go with the Kodiak brakes. When you get tie down axles, you get tie down brakes. This caliper is less than a year old. This came on a brand new boat trailer that was used in salt water and it has an aluminum piston and an aluminum caliper with a steel brake pad that has no coating on it whatsoever. Nothing, nada, this is all aluminum. The problem with this is it comes on a stamp steel bracket that flexes and as you can see how rusty this is this is only off of trailer that's a year old this little rivet that holds this little clip here to this brake pad they break and they fail and you've seen in some of my past videos where these brake pads will just drop right out then this piston comes all the way out and it's aluminum and it burns itself down on the steel rotor Eventually, it cocks in there, breaks the seal, and it pisses out all your brake fluid. All over your boat, all over your trailer, all over the road. No more braking. Go to the Kodiak. This is a steel caliper with a coating. This is their document coating. The pads themselves are all coated as well. This is, they call it E-coat. I've never had an issue where these pads rust or fail. You also get, I'll pull this pad out, you get a stainless clip on the back of this pad. 
And you can see that clip's not coming off by any means. It's just not. Full stainless triple lip seal. It has a dust seal and two different seals that hold that piston in there. Ain't that pretty? That's what you want on your brakes. Now, also look, the piston size is much bigger too. Much, much bigger. I can't get that out of there, it's all rusted. So, this is where size matters. This means you're getting more clamping load on your braking. Big difference. These calipers are both the same size calipers. They're both for a 12 inch rotor or 10 inch rotor. But this piston's got a lot more square area it's going to give you more clamping load. It's going to give you more power in your brakes and better brake control. These pads are also thicker. Brand new versus brand new-ish. <clears throat> but again, this is a much better caliper. Here's, here's the bonus feature. Kodiak modeled this after a General Motors caliper. This caliper part number, 225, if you've got these on your, on your boat trailer... Is a General Motors, like we saw, say, cloud cars. It's the Cutlass Sierras. Um, what is it? The, uh, the Oldsmobile Calais. These are a front-wheel drive caliper. You can buy these brake pads at any auto parts store, get a lifetime warranty on your brake pads, and you never have to buy brake pads for your boat trailer again. The part number for the brake pads is MKD289. You know, like a 289 Ford motor? Yeah, Mustang. Think about it. MKD 289 and that way if you're anywhere in the country you can also buy a General Motors brake caliper for a very very popular car back in the 80s and you can get parts for it cheap and easy on the road you break down on the road you need to find pads for this nope you got to go to a marine dealer to buy the pads you got to go to a marine dealer to buy the parts um, I'm saying a marine dealer I mean a trailer parts supplier to get anything for these nothing else Automotive will bolt right up to it. Junk versus a quality product. This has only flip it over. <clears throat> Can you just see how bad that is? It's just it's a nightmare. You know, you've got this bleeder here screws into the housing. So as soon as this starts getting wallered out, they start to leak right around the edges here. Um that's a bad design. This uses a brass insert with a bleeder made to it. So all you have to do is move brass against brass. No corrosion, no BS, no problems. This uses a steel guide pin, which the guide pins typically get frozen. This uses a steel guide pin inside of another st stainless steel guide pin. You can lubricate these with grease and it makes the caliper so that they stay nice and pliable. It's just, it's, this is what it takes to go the extra mile when you're building a trailer. And we haven't even talked about what we're doing with the hub. We'll get to that a little bit later in this build. But I just wanted to share a little bit of information when it comes to brakes, when it comes to fasteners, there's only one way to do it right. And that's why we're doing this trailer the way we are. Have a blessed day. God bless America. And let's go, Brandon.